tycoon by the name of Ted Turner. He's actually the one who founded CNN. Uh, he also was the founder of uh, TBS, the television network that many watch today. Ted, uh, Ted Brock, or Turner Broadcasting is what TBS actually stands for. And he was also the owner for, I think, a decade or more of the baseball team, the Atlanta Braves. Needless to say, Ted Turner was a wealthy man. His uh, net worth was well in the billions. He one time made this statement. It might have been tongue in cheek because he was known as being a very confident, if not arrogant man. He said, if I only had a little humility, I'd be perfect. <laughs> I'm not too sure. Maybe he really believed that, but he recognized he didn't have humility. And one might have a lot of power, a lot of resources, but one of the greatest things to possess is a humble heart. And that's why Peter begins to talk about this. You know, he'd just been talking about shepherds serving like Jesus did in a humble way. And he says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5, in the same way, you who are younger, submit yourselves to the elders. So there's this same idea of servitude with a humble heart. He's calling for humility among those who are younger. This word submit we've seen before, haven't we? If you've been with us in our study in First, First Peter, it was in chapter 2, uh, being submissive to human authorities and slaves to masters and in a domestic setting, and then all heaven and its powers submitted to the Lord. And now the younger are to submit to the elder. And in many cultures, that's strongly followed even today. But then he makes this general statement, all of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another. That is a great command, a great word of instruction and insight for all of us. Live our lives toward others with a humble heart. Now the word clothe is a very interesting Greek word. It actually means to fasten or bind, and it used to refer to the apron that a servant would put up around themselves before they would get involved in some dirty job. Think of Jesus in John 13, when he put a towel around himself and washed the feet of the disciples, all of you. Clothe yourself with humility toward one another. And then he says there's a reason for it. This is found in verse 5. It's a quotation from the book of Proverbs chapter 3. The reason is this. God opposes the proud, but gives grace or favor to the humble. That was picked up by the New Testament writers. Here, Peter picks it up, but James picks it up as well and uses it in chapter 4. God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. That's why humility is so valuable. And whatever else you might achieve in this world, it means nothing. If you don't have a right relationship with God, if your sins aren't forgiven, what, a, what is it a profit a person if they gain the whole world? but lose their own soul. And the only way your soul can be saved is to be humble. That is to acknowledge your sin. And that doesn't save you, but that's the first step in drawing you to the Savior to ask for forgiveness. I like the poem that comes out of Pilgrim's Progress written by John Bunyan. He that is down need fear no fall. He that is low no pride. He that is humble ever shall have God to be his guide. The one who is humble will always have God as his guide. So the Bible tells us, humble yourselves. That's verse six. This is how it's done. Humble yourselves, your responsibility. But you can't do it. That's why you have to humble yourself under God's mighty hand, with God's direction and help. That's the only way that you can be humble. It must be a work of grace. Humility is a gift of God's spirit. Humility is God taking us through some hard times and knocking out of us the arrogance that so easily fills us. Humble yourself under God's mighty hand. And in due time, he will exalt you. He will reward you. He will lift you up. So how do I... 
how do I actually do this? Well, I think verse 7 is one of the most instructive verses in all the Bible. Humility comes when we acknowledge that we are totally helpless. Cast all your worries. Cast every care. Cast all of your concerns upon him because he cares for you. What a great sermon. Because he cares for you, cast all of your worries upon him and trust him. That's how you humble yourself under God's mighty hand. You go to him with every concern, rest everything upon him, and let him not only be your savior, but your Lord and your shepherd. Let him be your chief shepherd, your good shepherd, and the great shepherd who guides your life. Warren Worsby once said, humility is not thinking poorly of yourself. It's not thinking of yourself at all. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, give us that right perspective where we acknowledge that without you, we can do nothing. Therefore, at the heart of our prayer is to worship you and to glorify you and to praise you and exalt you and to acknowledge you and adore you. That's the heart of our prayer. And then along with it is our cry for help. Oh Lord, cause us to be like you in every aspect of our life. In Jesus' name, amen.